How do websites work? Everybody knows what a website is. Websites or web pages are the gateway to all the content to the internet. But how do websites work? In this video, we'll explain it all. Stay tuned. Let's look at the average process of an internet user. You open up your browser and type in the name of your desired website. What you're doing is typing in a URL or a uniform resource locator. For example, youtube.com, when you type that in, you see some weird letters and slashes appear in front of the site's name. This is because youtube.com is not the full address for the website. The full address is http colon slash slash www.youtube.com. What is HTTP then? HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is a protocol that most websites follow in our modern time. It is basically a set of rules for your information transfer to follow. Now you've typed in the address of the website you want to be taken to. So that must mean every single website has its own server controlling the website, right? Well, not so much. When you go to a website, you're actually going to the domain host. There are several domain providers who provide servers for website owners to place their information on. When you access a web page, it has all its information stored on the server which is played back to you as a website. Large corporations like Google have their own server and affiliate companies can use the Google server to host their information. When your website loads, you see the home page. Most websites nowadays are designed by teams of people we call web designers. These people write lines of text that the computer can understand. When your internet browser loads the website, it translates that code into something that you can understand, such as pictures, videos, and text. The code can be written in many different languages. Some popular languages are HTML, JavaScript, XML, and c -sharp. What is the difference between these languages? Like our spoken languages, Different programming languages use different words and symbols to tell the computer to do different things. If you would like to take a look at the code of a website, you can right click anywhere on the site in your browser, if you're using Chrome, and click inspect element. Then you can scroll through the hundreds of lines of codes that dictate the structure of the website you're using, and you can even change some of them. When you loaded up the page, several things were going on. Now we know web designers are responsible for writing the code on that page. But does every single user interaction go to the server and back? Well no, that takes far too much time. If you click a button on the sidebar of your YouTube page, unless you visually see that the page is refreshed, you have made something called a client-side change. Everything you do on a network is separated into two categories, client-side and server-side. Client-side activities have information that is stored on your computer that will often disappear if you reload the page or close the website. Server-side activities are things that will go to the server and become stored in its hard drives. An example of a client-side change would be when you click on a Google link and it changes color. This information is stored into the browser. However, Google doesn't keep track if it occurred, unless they need to, to use it for your user benefits and cater to your needs. If you delete the cache or reinstall the browser, that information would disappear. The same effect happens on apps like Instagram. If you load someone's page, it'll show you small thumbnail icons. These are small in size and low to your phone to provide a smooth experience without using too much data. When you make the picture bigger, you can see much more, but it will load about 10 times the size of that thumbnail. Typically, client-side events and server-side events operate on different languages. The client-side language has the main purpose of displaying visuals and cool buttons and text. These languages include, but are not limited to, JavaScript, c -sharp, HTML. The other type of languages are what run the action when you use them. For example, if you click on a website with a video game, the video game will be displayed using a different language. Server-side languages are usually much more shallow and easy to learn, while client-side languages are powerful and harder to learn. Usually a web designer will have the job of a graphical interface, of the website while the server-side developer will have the job of the background work. So in the end, websites are like restaurants. You go into the restaurant and you look at the atmosphere. Then you order something from the menu and the waiter carries the information to the kitchen where the real magic happens. The waiter gives you the information and you eat it. You pay the bill and the waiter takes the bill away and you leave. Except in this case, the kitchen is a server, the restaurant is the website, and the waiter is the network. We hope you learned something new from our videos. 
you have any questions or concerns or would like to suggest another topic for us to make a video about, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.